Welcome back to the Collegiate Call of Duty playoffs here in Season 2. We're kind of skipping backwards. We had a Winner's Round 2 matchup, caught the tail end of another, and now we're actually jumping down to Loser's Round 1 as the University of Texas Arlington will be playing up against the University of Northern Iowa, a matchup that, honestly speaking, Brody, I'm not even throwing gas in appropriately. I'm actually really excited about this matchup. This is one of those while I was making my bracket. I spent a lot of time going back and forth. Is it Arlington that's got the upper hand? Is it Union I has got the upper hand? Both schools relatively close together, so hosting shouldn't make too much of a difference. And again, statistically, both these teams very close to one another as far as how they kind of fared through the West for UTA and through the Midwest from UNI. I'm very excited to see how these guys kind of square up against one another. And I think you're going to find as we get into the, the, the deeper stats for this matchup, they are much closer than you even know. Uh, you know, yeah. you take a look at the stats for these two teams. Uh, we'll go to the, the rosters first, uh, because, of course, uh, we, we've, got to, we've got to break down what these two rosters actually look like with the players that you guys are going to be seeing uh, throughout this series. Of course, Northern Iowa Panthers going up with uh, Dorno, Mello, uh, Jimba or Jimbat. Uh, who knows the exodus in the names? Uh, Splashy and Matthew Hawk 1. Of course, they'll be facing UDA Summit, Linger, Omega, Kid Dragon, and natural and magic v-man uh, so that's what the rosters are going to look like between northern iowa panthers and uta summit but as i said I, I think really the tale of this match comes down to the stats between these two teams and again i mean we can't compare them on screen by my one we'll start with uta in terms of the stats uh ship and you can just see you, you look at the stats across the board and this is actually pretty good for both teams um so we'll look at the stats for uda uh 14 and 8 for a hard point, 15 and 5 to search, and 12 and 5 in domination overall. Uh, those are some pretty good stats, I would say. 100%. And uh, the bigger storyline is the fact that they actually hold a positive win loss ratio versus other playoff teams in search and destroy, most recently taking a 6 2 win versus the universe, Purdue University. So uh, that's a big bonus for you. Plus, in the games that they were able to send to a game five, where initially in the regular season, you would have thought they were the underdogs or potentially taking away a game five. All of that has come on the back end, most that have their search and destroy. The biggest weakness for this UTA squad is their domination. They're just 12 and five overall all in the regular season which is only good enough for 21st of our 32 teams but against other playoff teams they only fare at a total of one in five at a minus 25 point differential and this is where they got essentially blown out by purdue yesterday who to be fair is a very strong domination squad but that's where you're looking at this team to try to really kind of pick up that little bit of a chip to make sure that they can get through this uni squad and potentially continue a potential cinderella run through the bracket but you take a look at their counterparts at the university of northern iowa it's a simple fact the matter of their statistics again very even search and destroy just as good as uta's domination not quite as good uh, in overall, but better than UTAs. The bigger problem is their hard point. It's been a little bit wild. And here's the other kind of issue. Stunner was not able to participate in playoffs. So we're looking at Matthew as being the last minute sub in. And respawn is typically where you see a little bit of a struggle from those players. Again, think about how many times we've seen it in the amateur scene or especially in the pro scene with the Call of Duty League where you put a last minute sub in and now all of a sudden, how does that kind of change the dynamic of what your team is looking at? Who's going to play the objective? It, it, Stunner was one of their main SMG players to begin with. So Matthew Hawk is going to have to find a way to just fit his way into this team. And I'm really looking at Dorno as one of their main flex players to potentially lead this UNI squad to a potential, uh, I'll call it an upset here versus UTA, candidly speaking, considering that they're dealing with the last minute sub in and the fact that UTA did look pretty solid all the way through that series versus Purdue with only a couple of exceptions. I think that's definitely going to for us fans to work. So, you know, I didn't know that actually that was the case, that Stunner wasn't here for this matchup. Um, I think that maybe changes things. I was framing this one up as a very close affair between these two sides. That might not be the case at all. This could prove to be, as you say, an upset um, if Stunner, uh, I guess the absence of Stunner causes some issues for you and I. Uh, that being said, they're, they're, I guess their fill-in could be very, very good here. We we simply do not know. Uh, but talking about a map set in the series, Hackney Yard Hardpoint is going to kick us off. And, uh, you know, you say, statistically speaking, these two teams are very close together. Well, they are. And that actually goes for the case on Hackney Yard Hardpoint <laughs> too. Uh, you know, this is one of the best mode, map, map mode combinations for these two teams on Hardpoint. Four and two are uh, UN at UTA right now on this map and three and one are UNI. So very, very close. This map has been pretty nice. Um, and it's kind of wild, right? That kind of, I guess, stat line stays the same throughout the entirety of this series, specifically yes. relating to Arc of Peak Search and Destroy. And is it crazy 
how good Arco Peak Session Story is for both of these teams. Seven and one for UCA, eight and three for you and I. Uh, it, it's so, so clear that this is so favored. Initially, I, when I was doing my notes for the series, I looked at it. I saw UTA was seven and one. I was like, oh no. This is going to be another one of those situations where you and I just <laughs> didn't see that this, this was the map. And then I looked at you and I's map record on an RP search and story, and I was like, all right, never mind. They just want to play it. And so I think that's going to be an incredibly tense matchup to see that search and story go down. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. The, all th first of these three maps, I think, are the preferred maps for each of these teams. Flat mm -hmm. out. Uh, like you mentioned, Hackney Yard, most rehearsed, best mode and map combination for both UTA and you and I. Same thing for Arklov Peak. And then the Gunrunner is the domination for map three. Again, a lot of experience for Northern Iowa there. They're five and four overall, but UTA also do very well here. They're three and one on that map in specific. So our first three maps very well could be pretty tight. And now we'll just dig right into it. Enough stat, enough theory crafting. Let's just see how the action pans out and specifically how Matthew Hawk for you and I starts off his first playoff series. Oh, I'm very excited to see how Matthew Hawk plays this one. Of course, being a fill-in for Northern Iowa Panthers, of course, they're gonna have him for this entire playoffs, I believe. Um, so let's see what he can do on the squad and actually can start things off one and oh but of course this is a uh, hard point so we're going to be seeing the spawns here for uh so be pretty good for p2 now they're breaking for p1 northern iowa pampas in top l let's see if they can break it. now taking a look to see what exactly occurs here uta trying to make their way is just hold off this push from you and i matthew taking his time peeking around the corner taken down without much of a problem and uta again looking pretty solid not only because they're holding those p2 spawns like you mentioned but they've already found 25 seconds worth of time and at this point halfway through the hill you essentially say we've done our job we've gotten our time and we're holding on so now we just go back to the tire shop and we do whatever we possibly can to get ourselves set up to essentially make this a potential full 60 and uh, so far so good as you and i cannot find their way out even out of the warehouse yet let alone towards the backside of p2 and that could be down to, of course, the great map positioning from Omega. He was currently covering the offices, but of course, uh, with the AR, can also look across. Actually, going to be an MP5, but it, of course, that is essentially an AR in Modern Warfare, and it will be getting some nice cross before getting taken down. This is the potential chance here for Northern Iowa to break early on. It's going to be Mellow, the closest player into the action, ready to get some action, and wins that good fight against Magic B-Man, causing some issues inside the hill. Can't win the second, unfortunately, against XO, so that's not really going to matter that much. But Northern Iowa Pampas, they are causing some issues for UJ Summit early on. Again, though, I feel like even with 30-second 30, you can kind of see Northern Iowa thinking, right, we've got one more push left in this hard point, then we're going to go to next. And unfortunately for them, that just doesn't work out. All of those gunfights being won by the great support AR play from Magic Beeman. And, of course, there are the remaining AR on the roster. And UDA Summit here looking pretty good. They're going to get a full 60 off the back of the hill. Guys, I think we can the case and now it just comes down to stopping uta from cutting across the map and unfortunately because northern iowa has essentially just been stuck in the warehouse no one really wanting to cut across the map it's actually led to uta working their way through the office into a position where linga can take off the player of the hill itself and then all of a sudden you could potentially maybe get an early flip for those p5 spawns and again set yourself up for a potential early flood to p3 but just as much as it was needed you and i are able to find these ars and to get them a couple of kills over the middle of the map, and that will actually put them right back on this smokestack. Hard point, still plenty of time to fight for as well, as Northern Iowa will now finally get past the 40 point mark. That they will. It is important to note that smokestack is one of these hard points in the game that is very easy, not necessarily to break, but just take the opposition off the hill. You, you know, you might not get all that much time yourself, but UDA Summit can easily just keep Northern Iowa Panthers away from this hard point, and that is exactly what's happening. Neither team can really get all that much time on the hill saying that North Island Powers uh, will get this last 15 seconds of time. We move towards the office though and there's some important rotational gunfights being won and Mega gets a huge two piece over towards that side of the map. That's gonna clear out, make it free actually, gonna wow. clear out offices for an early hold here for UDA Summit. That multi-kill could potentially see UDA Summit walk away from North Iowa Pampers in terms of the scoreline. Now here's the next thing you're looking for if you're a UTA Summit fan. You're looking for a favorable kill feed in which you can push through the hard point and then immediately make your way over to P5. They get the kill feed and they start making a move over towards the top side of the third part of the smokestack, but they don't fully commit to it. So there is an opportunity there for UTA to essentially get some pressure over towards the fifth hard point, and then they decide, hey, we can make this play, but the timing isn't there. Splash is able to come back through, find a Semtex for two kills, and a third one with the SMG, and just like that, Northern Iowa, and if 
position to contest the hill. Again, a little bit of a mistiming there for UTA. They had a four-man wipe. That's what he did, turn that into map pressure. And because they don't, and they try to make the play a little bit too late, now you and I are not only contesting the hill throughout the back 30, but they've held on to the P5 spot. And these P5 ones could be very, very crucial for North Iowa. You've got to think they're down by, what, a solid 80 points right now. UTA Summit's built themselves a solid lead over North Iowa Panthers, but these P5 spawns could really change things for the Panthers. Linger though, looking to uh, cause some issues. And smoke is going to provide coverage, not just them, but to another player to filter through. Linger causing all kinds of issues, picks up two hill in the hard point. Magic V-Man is going to perform some lovely tricks inside the hill to pick up three, and UDA Summit within 20 seconds break the hill away from North Iowa Panthers, and what was a crucial moment in this hard point, I said it, North Iowa Panthers, they need to get all of that time. UDA just break right in, and you and I lose control of the hill. They lose control of this game, ship. But well, wait, they actually have a four-man wipe coming from the backside of yellow. There's only one more player to deal with the hill, and that's Kid Dragon. So, yeah, they get broken halfway through in what I like to call that contest 20 seconds, the middle 20. But they come back through and take one more hit of the scrap 20, which they will get. But now here's the next problem for you and I. You did great. You got the scrap 20. But how are you making your play across the map to get to the P2 side of the spawn? Northern Iowa, top side of your minimap, four-man stack through office. This has to be successful for Northern Iowa. Otherwise, not only will they give up a lot of time here on P1, but they won't be in a position to find a potential full 60 on P2. This is a critical moment for the Panthers. That it is. Once again, yet another critical moment for the Panthers. They need to break in for P1, and they're not going to do it. I do like this in a way from Panthers. Yeah, you're giving up for quite a lot of time, but you're concentrating on the spawns for next. Matthew Hawk loses yet another important one-on-one, -on -one, and the spawns immediately affected as number five, Kid Dragon, spawn. Very, very close. Yes, we have our Dragons here in the CCL. And uh, UDA Summit going to work lovely off the back of it. North Iowa Panthers breaking for the last 20 seconds of time. They know at this point they kind of need every single second they can get. But UCA Summit, they have the spawns. This campaign for North Iowa Panthers to take the spawns for a P2. It fails. And honestly, Shift, I can already see how this one's going to go. UDA Summit, they held a full 60 last time. And you need something special here from North Iowa Panthers to break it early. Well, wait, Dorno has made his way across the middle. It's going to open up some space through Useless, as you're going to see Jimbot actually go up top, but he gets cut down by XO. Linga zoning out the front part of the warehouse. That'll be enough to regrow the stabilization for UTA on the tire shop specifically. And now, like you mentioned, there's only one way that this hill's going to go, and it likely will be about a 245 to 97, unless you and I can find a way to break. And again, because of that scoreline, you have to contest every single second. And if you do not win a rotational pull here into the P2 spawn, you're going to likely give up space in the middle of the map where UTA could turn scrap into initial between P2 and P3. And it looks like with 20 seconds left, Northern Iowa are realizing, all right, they can't win here, but we have to play a perfect back half of this rotation, even make this game close, as they're essentially going to be looking at a 247 to 97 score total going into this third hard point. And the worst bit here, shit, shift here, is that uh, we're going to smoke stack, which is not the nicest hill to work with on Hackney Yard Hardpoint. And they've lost control already. Melo is going to have to stay uh... faced here. And oh, no. How do you even allow that to be honest with you? That was uh, not the best scenario there for North Iowa Panthers. I think one thing is for sure, you can absolutely tell that they were not playing with their mainline roster. They were making a few mistakes here, there, and everywhere. And all those mistakes really added up to UTA winning that map. <laughs> that they did. One thing I will say, right, I believe Stunner was meant to be a main sub, right? I could be wrong in saying this. So, Stunner yeah. is a, a main SMG player. They replaced them with Matthew Hawk, who was running AR there, so it's at least a flex player. There's some role, I guess, switching going on that is going to make the rest of the roster a little bit uncomfortable. And it's one of those things, you know, there's a reason why for SMG is the meta, not just on this map, but usually and generally as a whole on Respawn. And it simply comes down to the fact that this is a very difficult map to just lock down lines of sight with. You have to be forced to be on your high horse so often to make the rotations come through. And when you're essentially offering yourself of saying, all right, we're not just playing stationary with one player, but we're also going to set down shop with the second. You're shorthanded on the breaks for SMGs, and that's where things become a little bit more difficult. And again, it's a little unfortunate that there isn't the ability for this UNI team to play with their expected roster, where they're going to be able to have a little bit more pressure from a player like Stunner on the SMG line. But uh, that is a map that, even though they found so much success with throughout the regular season, it would be a difficult one to jump into with a sub, no matter what role he played. Mm -hmm. Because again, like we mentioned, there are so many situational things that had to be converted on. 
in the snap of a finger. And we even saw for UTA, they missed one of those opportunities. Again, from going from the initial rotation of that office P4 to the back warehouse by docks for P5, they missed an opportunity to convert off of a four or five man wipe. And it turns into, oh, hey, guys, no one's here. We should push through. Oh, wait, they just respawned. If you make that call five seconds faster, they have a perfect game. So it was clean for UTA. But again, some things to still kind of keep your eye on. And we're in the loser's bracket. If you want to try to make a long run here, those are some mistakes that hopefully as UTA goes back and rewatches, they take note of and say, okay, we need to read this better next time through because you're not going to get gifted that kind of luxury versus a better team as you make your way through this bracket. Yeah, it, it does happen. But as you say, you've got to fix those mistakes. I, I, like, I want to put an asterisk on it in a way and just say, look, you know, I kind of know here that for for UTA, you're not, or sorry, from you and I, you're not playing with your mainline roster. You're not playing with your, your that fifth that you are normally comfortable with. But still, even then, you don't make those mistakes. Though That's basic stuff for me personally. Yeah. Uh, but as I said before, and I, I've, as I've always said, in these situations, yeah, you get a 100-point club, but you've got to put it to the back of your mind because now you're moving into your best map mode combination yep arc off peak search and destroy let me remind you guys uh, if you didn't hit you weren't here uh before we started map number one seven and one are uda on this map eight and three are you and i those are some great great stat lines coming into this one and it is why arc off peak search and destroy has made it through again in this situation if you're a uh, you and i and you see uh, one team seven and one on a particular map you veto that you veto it very very quickly not I in would. this case not when you're eight and three <laughs> I mean, at the same point, you take a look at some of the playoff matches that they've had or playoff teams that they've played up against. A lot of their wins and losses come in there against the same caliber of opponents. So for all intents and purposes, this should be a relatively even match. But again, you're dealing with the sub in last minute here. Matthew Hawk, can he potentially keep locking things down as Northern Iowa will be on the offense first and they're at least posturing for a potential B hit early. Linga ready for this one up close and personal in the front lawn. As you see that on your mini map, number six is in the middle of the map watching this rotation potentially come to be. We can catch one of their perspectives as here comes the UNI push. Here's Jorno up close and personal. He actually wins it with a pistol for the trade. Kid Dragon getting a spam through the fencing will actually find a response. And just like that, it'll be a now 2v4 as Omega finds another pick for UT on the opposite side of the map. We'll fire with Panthers right now. Going to be in a two versus four, of course. They, uh, technically speaking, have some agency in this round, having the bomb in hand. Yeah. Jimbot looking for this first kill. Unfortunately, jumps out the window the wrong way, but does get the kill onto Magic Beeman regardless. Now makes this a two versus three. Melo has spotted out Omega in the mid map, now hunting down said kill. Might get a little bit unfortunate here as Omega comes flying out of the other side. Melo still looking for this kill elsewhere. Exo takes down Jimbot. And it leaves Mello in a one versus three. Make that a one versus two as Mello finally sniffs out that kill against Omega. Problem here, of course, for Mello is that bomb is down in a bad place. Picks it up, checks the window as she rightfully would. And UDA Summit maybe has to pick up the kill off the back of that. And that was kind of unfortunate in a way for a North Iowa Panthers. They made the right ball going towards the B site. It just doesn't work out when you don't have the numbers. And if you watched yesterday, this UTA squad versus Purdue handled that B defense so well as Purdue kind of kept forehead rushing into B every single offense for the most part. But this is looking like a much more diligent offensive setup, at least initially for you and I. So we'll see how that all progresses. XO is the player to really kind of keep an eye out here for UTA as he's likely to be carrying the AX50 into battle. You can see it strapped to the back. He's going to make the play over towards A to potentially find an opening for his blood. Smoke will start to embellish the A site by the sound of it. Kid Dragon just kind of waiting to see if he's going to catch any information. And Exo will try to go for a first shot. We'll find Dorno. And that will be good enough for first blood on the, what looks to be the opposing sniper. But again, meanwhile, we'll take a look at your minimap. Linga once again making a push on the opposite side of the map has found one kill by B. And now all of a sudden he's on the backside looking for a flank. And that flank could be crucial. Beeman wins that fight. And this is really problematic for the North Iowa Panthers as now. They just have one player on that A site all alone, dealing with Beeman and Exo, who have them trapped. I suppose the one good thing is Mello could come and save, and I think Mello looks to do so. Throws out a nade Beeman's way. That's surely going to make Beeman run away from that nade and gets the kill there from Mello. But elsewhere, of course, unfortunately, Exo going to take down Matthew Hawk. So now a one versus one situation oh, here for Shift. This and is Exo all has Mello. just picked this bomb up. Mello needs to spot this rotation comes in oh my goodness exo just has a little bit better game sense as uta take a second round here 
off what was, what was a, a great start. I think they play that offense so, so well. And to be fair, the North Iowa Panthers there, they dealt with the aggression rather well by slowing the push right down to a snail's pace. But still, it all comes down to just a one-on-one -on -one engagement. And unfortunately for UDA, unfortunately for you and I, UDA going to come out on top of that one. And that really just came down to Melo made the right call. I thought for a second he was going to cut through the A house and the timing would have been atrocious for him as the rotation would have been exactly opposite. But at least he gives him a shot for that 1v1. But like you mentioned, Exo just keeps the gunny up and checks the corner as he should. A couple of stuns, nades being tossed ceremoniously so past the A site. Nothing going to come of it for either team yet. Dorno trying to correct some of his mistakes versus Exo in the previous sniper battle. Wants to take this over to the trench, but gets there a little bit too delayed. And Exo will once again win the battle. Omega and Linga with two more to follow. And now it's just holding down the triggers as they make their way forward. Flashy will at least hold off the initial push. But again, all of this is going to lead to a Magic B-Man flank from the backside of Church. Mello, is he going to check this to his right? It's all about timing here. And actually, how about this? Mello may have just slipped through. And unless Magic B-Man checks his right, which now he will. I was going to say, maybe there's an opportunity. Ooh. Okay, Mello keeps this one alive. Now still just a 2v3, but Exo has been holding this angle all day long. He will find another pick, and now Mello again in a 1v4. Not a lot of time to play. No problem here for Mello. Of that bomb is down in ruin. So whichever way you look at this, not a lot of time on the clock for Mello to work with. Isn't a 1 versus 3. I mean, the odds are certainly stacked against him for this uh, bomb. Of course, now that Omega has to it out. The last player that will be made. Exo with the sniper rifle is dealt with in the trench, but now Melo doesn't even have time to get the fuse or get the plant, sorry. And it doesn't matter how we flick this is uh, Mecha and Kid Dragon have won this round. Melo can do absolutely nothing short of some magic 360 body. And UTA Summit, three <laughs> rounds straight now. North Iowa Panthers don't really have a reply. And again, it is just the aggression round after round after round. UTA have come out with the first blood. They've come out with, I would say, a lot more aggression and a lot more meaning than North Iowa Panthers. And, you know, it's just, it's tough. It really is. You know, we didn't get a chance to watch this Northern Iowa team play extensively through the regular season. But, you know, we started the entire season off with Northern Iowa playing up against the University of Iowa and what was a really fun game to cast. And, you know, Dorno's been really having a good year. Stunner as well had a very good year, considering this is the first time we've really seen this Northern Iowa team play in the CCL. It's been a really good inaugural season for them, but things looking a little bit dire here, not just down from the hard point, but down 3-0 early in this search. You're going to have to find a way to, again, pick yourself up by your britches. And how about that? Mellow finds first blood of the Magic Demon. That was, again, the distraction play that UTA has been finding a lot of success with through the middle of the map. And just like that, Linga, who wanted to stretch to the middle, has to play a little bit more passively. But Exo takes a headshot away from Matthew. One more here. Oh, the Rock just coming into play. I thought for sure he lined it up correctly. But I think a stone just got in the way. And Dorno will see one of his nine lives extended as he finds another kill onto Omega. Nine lives immediately uh, given up here as Kid Dragon takes Dorno down. EDA Summit now put this to a three versus two scenario. Of course, Kid Dragon to get that bomb down with uh, little to no repercussions. Now down to Jim Bop and Mello. And a two versus three here. The retake the site. 40 seconds left on the clock. And of course, now Mello going to get tagged in from behind. Linga up top in Grandma's house going to deal with that. And now it's just down to Jim Bop. One versus three. That's for the first kill. Spots out the second in front. And Exo has some shots pelleted into him. Jimbot still has a feeling that they can win this round, but not when Kid Dragon... Oh, maybe not. Maybe me. Oh, never mind. Doesn't matter. Jimbot going to lose that one-on-one -on -one engagement, and UDA Summit stay flawless in this Search and Destroy. And Shift. Oh, man, this Search and Destroy... This, this entire series is one that we said was going to be incredibly close. All the maps would be incredibly close. It was a blowout in Hardpoint, and in Search and Destroy, it's not looking all that different. UDA are just playing a level better. Yep, yeah, and again, like I mentioned, watching this UTA team play up against Purdue yesterday, just yesterday, on this map, they just look so calm, collected, and clinical. And when you've got a sniper that's 8-1, and one, of course, he did get some assistance from an AR in one of those rounds, but regardless, he's finding so much value at long range. Dorno's put away the scope, saying, all right, boys, we got to try to make this hit over towards B, and this is a must-win round, you feel, for Northern Iowa. So Jimbot will be trusted to walk this one forward as he's got the bomb. It was gonna burst through the doors, doesn't check his full left, where's the trade? There it is, but it comes at another cost of another member, and 
Again, this is just a tough situation. You still got a Magic B-Man watching from the snow path just outside. He's going to try to get a spam through the window. So he finds a couple of shots in the Semtex will try to follow up. But Northern Iowa not really relinquishing control of this BS and D site as of yet. UTR and the rotation from A will now be here to try to retake. But again, this is a smart play from Northern Iowa. They're looking for another kill before they commit to get into this bomb planted. Northern Iowa right now. Not really a number to fight, of course. This is a three versus three, folks. But again, I need something in this round. You need to win that fight, and that's so bad because now Exo takes out Matthew Hawk. The bomb is down up top, and it really adds in a sense of urgency to this round. Smash it. Come on, man. You've got to hit those nades. You all know they're going to take out Exo. 15 seconds left in this one, and there really will be a sense of urgency to the way Dorno plays this. Not going to win the fight. UTA just squeezed Northern Iowa Panthers in that last round, and five to zero up now our UTA. We need a full sale comeback. Never thought that would be more relevant uh, than in a CCL. <laughs> just, I, we need something here, Shift. Honestly, I'm not liking what we're seeing from you and I at the moment. Uh, it's it, it, When you're at round four, round five, down this badly, and you're kind of still rolling the dice of, well, let's try this, let's hope it works, and it doesn't, now all of a sudden your guessing game doesn't have a lot of room. You just have to play clinically. You have to start to find something that will work for you and Again, you take a look at just the KDs overall. Again, not terrible necessarily for Northern Iowa, but it's EXO again, nine and two, now being unopposed on the sniper rifle. Uh, that's tough. And now he will see the profile of one player, top side of the mound. And now everyone will, I imagine, start picking up some nades to see if they can't find a way to take care of this player. EXO, stunned, tagged by a frag. And again, you see Linga. He's been doing this every single round on offense. Trying to make a play to the middle of the map. You and I, though, have eventually read this, and that's going to be first blood for the Panthers. And opportunities, now they'll find a second blood, both of them from Jimbot, and now a 5v3. You would love to win this round out flawlessly and just, again, build some individual confidence for all five members of the Panthers as you try to make, like you mentioned, a full sale occur. I will say, they got very lucky there. Jimbot was actually jumping over the fence, looking for that first kill onto Linga. Of course, the follow-up kill was a little bit more skillful, but still... Three versus five now for UDA Summit. If they get 6 0 in this fashion, this would absolutely crush Northern Iowa Panthers. They do get the first kill. Exo with this pistol is clinical, looking for some more kills and will surely find them any second now. Unfortunately for Exo, Splashy has their number. And UDA Summit now off the back of Omega looking for a 6 0. Not going to happen. And the Northern Iowa Panthers, there is life in this team. I feel like we've just kicked the body and they've just woken up somehow. And uh, looking at this Northern Iowa Panthers, that is a much, much better played round. I will say, though, Shift, again, you, you kind of have to put the asterisks on it in a way that Jimbo is very, very lucky that they jumped the fence and covered Mello in the second that they did. Because a second later, and Lingo would have got that kill. Yeah, absolutely. Would have. Would have, could have, should have, though, in that one. So the first round going the way the Panthers. There's going to be five more in a row, though. And again, the offense has been... I won't say completely unsuccessful, but it's had a hard time crossing the finish line in a couple of these rounds. And in this one, you've got to find a way to start off on the right foot, and they're hoping this could be by way of nade spam over towards the mound. I think most of it was dealt with by a trophy system. Some nades maybe got over the top of the roofing, but it's a lot of utility down there for UTA, or probably for you and I. And now with Jimbot in the bomb, nice shots for Dorno, who again has given up the sniper rifle. Exo. He's going to continue to watch. Matthew actually finds a kill trying to get one player on the cross. Oh. And, oh, goodness, Exo. He must have caught a shoelace or something. He's going to go for the repeat, and he will be punished for it. A touch over aggressive. So, again, extra life being breathed into the lungs here for the Panthers as they find the first two kills. But watch out. It's the Magic B-Man flank. He's found one, and you and I have to deal with this, but there's not a lot of time on the clock. You also need to make the bomb not only get picked up, but you also got to find a way to plan it. Somebody hand me a whiteboard right now, man. I'm seeing Jimbot go for the weirdest pushes in the world, but luckily for Northern Iowa Panthers, they have Melo. They have the last remaining player too. And whew, Northern Iowa Panthers, they don't get punished for their mistakes. And I will say, I, you know, I don't want to call out anything specific. You know, I don't want to say one player is, is causing some issues for Northern Iowa Panthers right now. There are a few players, even now, with that round being one, where I'm just like, you fix those and you could be in a much better position, right? Oh, UTA Summit are, uh, you know, they could have very easily won that round, especially off the back of what, what was that beam and flank, but still doesn't work out as you, as you said in the prior round, woulda, coulda, shoulda. And uh, UDA Summit now still looking for this sixth and final round to close out this game and take a two to zero series advantage. North Iowa Panthers though, they are not done. Still have found some life, walked into the Lazarus pit and have come out gleaming. 
Let's see what they can do in round number eight. As once again, they are on the defense here. UDA Summit gonna draw first blood though. Exo Snipers a little bit better. No shoelaces being hit in this round shift. And now with an advantage, UDA Summit still moving towards A. And just look at the scoreboards left to right. You take Exos 12 and four off the board, you don't look at what the current score is. You would say if you're looking at seven and seven, four and six, five and seven, you know, seven, four, five, four, seven for the kills compared to six, five, three, five, you're sitting there saying that the game is either tighter or Northern Iowa's up. It's simply put that Exo is having an incredible game. Linga will find likely a traitor on the Mello, who nearly reads it correctly. Goodness. But again, numbers here potentially for you and I to deal with this potential push through as UTA Summit. As long as they can deal with Linga on the back, it should be a 2v2, and there's no bomb here for the University of Texas at Arlington. So if they can find a way to delay the clock a little bit longer, this is a very doable 2v2. And UTA Summit, get that bomb down there. North Iowa Panthers now going to have to go for a retake. It is just a two versus two. This is still very good. Oh dear, Splash's head is gone. Matthew Hawk now in a one versus two has to pull this one off. Knows where Omega is, and that is crucial. The substitute for North Iowa Panthers. Can they do stunner proud? That is the question. And Matthew Hawk right now is just playing this very correctly. Unfortunately, Man. UDA just playing it a little bit better. The one on one engagement won. And North Iowa Panthers, their run there, the comeback is stopped before it can even get started, really, as UTA Summit. Going to come out on top of the one-on-one -on -one engagement. Come out on top of the search and destroy 6-2. And now shift. We're looking down the barrel of a 3-0 sweep potentially as we hit Gunrunner Domination next. It is going to be UTA up 2-0. to zero. You, you got to give at least some consolidation to Matthew who still is able to find seven kills. And again, in a system that he might not know all that well. I can't really sp essentially speak to what experience uh, Matthew has with this full team. But, I mean, you can see it represented in the clan tags, how important Stunner is to this UNI squad. And I know for me personally, you know, when I was looking at this matchup, at full force, I think this game is at least closer, right? I'm not trying to take anything away from UTA. They played very well versus Purdue yesterday. They are showing that if there was to be a, a high seed Cinderella, it could very well be the number 25 out of the UTA summit. But, in this particular matchup, based on the statistics that we were going off of at the top of the broadcast, I think this game would have been at least a lot closer with the full five-man roster that yeah. Northern Iowa has been playing with throughout the regular season. Uh, but again, circumstances are circumstances or validation. Different players didn't come through in their favor, and so now they're playing in a situation that they might not be as comfortable in. Well, let's be honest, they're not as comfortable playing in. Mm -hmm. So Gunrunner Domination is up next. Uh, that's going to be where you and I starts to find this reverse sweep starting. And I guess the good news here is that you have been more historically better at domination than your counterparts are, at least in terms of playing up against other playoff caliber teams. That's been the case, but are you going to miss the SMG presence that stunner is bringing? I think you will. It oh, just yeah. comes down to, are you able to guide and essentially quarterback Matthew around the map to where you need him to be to have the best influence? Because again, like you mentioned, Gunrunner Domination is one of those maps that does not feel as nearly one-sided as a map like Petro or a map like Hackney. Is there still a favored side? I think the consensus would be yes. Does it have as much influence as a map like Hackney or Petro? I personally don't think so, but you need to find a way to put some influence against this UTA squad because so far, like you had mentioned midway through that search, they've been in control all the way through in pace, tempo, and position. Yeah, UTA are well in the driver's seat in this series. And I think uh, they are taking you and I for a ride around the block and a half. Uh, it's just something isn't clicking for you and I. And, and I know that it's kind of obvious, right? I'm going to get people in the chat going, this, this cast is dumb. It's obvious that something's not going to be clicking because there's a player missing. Yeah, I know. That's the point I'm making. It, it's, it's apparent, right? And again, I think, again, like you said, you can't exactly speak to how much experience Matthew Hawke has with this roster. But as I kind of touched on at the start of the series... You can tell that on rolls alone, something is off with this roster. The fact that Agreed. you have one of your main subs, main SMGs out of the running and replaced with, at best, a flex player, and that much is apparent, It something is clear. Something is clearly going wrong with this roster. Um, it is kind of rough, again. The, the circumstances that you're in, uh, you know, you and I are actually in, in this situation, it wouldn't if it had to happen now, right? Well, especially when you're in the news. Yeah. You've, already, you've already used one of your lives, right? You only get one in the tournament and then that's it. You know, you're, you're in the loser's bracket. You then have to play perfect or you're done. 
And that's the situation that the Northern Iowa Panthers are now in. You know, they have to win these next three maps or they're out uh, in top 32, which isn't a bad placement. I mean, I, I don't even know how many teams we actually got to, to play in this year's CCL, right? But I know it was a hell of a lot more than last year. And top 32 is not a bad placement. I wouldn't be no. too sad about that, but still... It is kind of unfortunate that you do face a team as good as UDA Summer in your losers round one matchup, especially given, as you said, I mean, you have them as potentially one of the rosters that can make a Cinderella story push through this losers bracket, continue on and, and maybe place pretty highly. I mean, you look at this losers round one and just names it alone. UTA, Rutgers, Alabama, Arkansas. Those are the scariest mm -hmm. names in the mix in my mind and it's just unfortunate that you didn't get a, a little bit of an easier pull off northern iowa plus the fact you had to play up against gross spot in your first game and that's kind of where yeah. i wanted to transition my next point was you know again northern iowa has been better at domination historically through the regular season but yesterday they suffered a 101 to 200 point loss granted it was on saint petra a map that they had never played before in the regular mm -hmm. season previous to that encounter but still, if that's the dynamic that you're carrying from one domination of the match to another, you might be playing a little apprehensive and you cannot mm -hmm. afford to play on the back foot versus UTA because they know they're weak when it comes to their domination. But I can say for sure that this team has been working a lot on their dom and they're not going to be playing nearly as self-conscious as they were maybe in the very early stages or even in the last couple of weeks of the regular season. They're coming out looking to play a lot more aggressive. And we saw that versus Purdue. It just simply came down to the fact that Purdue absolutely handled that St. Petro domination of which they played UT Arlington at uh, yesterday. So mm -hmm. a weak point for UTA. You would have loved to have seen a closer Hackney, a closer Arklov Peak, but this for sure is a map that you feel like you can win. I'm not going to say have to because that's obvious. <laughs> they have to win this map, otherwise yes. their tournament is done. But this is a map that you should be feeling a lot more confident about. And if I'm in there, if I'm Dorno right now, say, boys, I know we had a rough time yesterday. Not the greatest start here, but this is a map mode combination we know. Trust each other. Go out. Make the plays that we know we can make. And let's take this game to UTA and not play on the backside of this game. I think this map is going to be very interesting. To me, Gunrunner Domination is one of the map mode combinations in this game that can snowball very quickly. One way it really or the can. Other. It, it very much can. I'd say it, it's just below Hackney Yard Domination in that respect, where it can snowball out of your control like super duper quick, especially if you're not spawning on the good side of the map. Um, that being said, I think Gunrunner Domination is just one of the, those maps that if you spawn on the seaside, you can essentially put in one of the easiest spawn traps in the entirety of the game. If you're spawning on A-side, you can essentially just send one or two players to continue to be a pain in the ass for yep. the opposite team on, on the sea flag. It, so you can play this very, very well, and you can snowball out your control. For me personally, I know that you and I have promise. I know that they can do it. They just need to begin that snowball. They need to get some momentum in their favor um, because right now it just isn't there. And that's going to be, I think, one of the struggles, as you said. It's kind of like a locker room moment, right? It's gonna, it's gonna be like the whoever the yeah. the IGL for this roster is. It's gonna have to take the team uh, out for a second and just be like, look, guys. We are 2 0 down. We got railed. <laughs> like they got railed. There's no way around it. You just have to accept that. And it really is if they have the mental fortitude to accept the fact that they got 100 point clubs in map number one, sick two in the search and destroy, and they can still come back. That's really, I think it's, it just comes down to the mental fortitude, the mental headspace for these teams. Um, so we'll see what happens. But again, as you actually rightly pointed out, Gunrunner domination could be one of the high points for this team in the series. And so far, as we've said, it has been really 50-50 in terms of sort of, I guess, map win percentage on these specific maps, these specific uh, map mode combinations. I mean, we kind of pointed out that for Arkloff Peak Search and Story very specifically, these guys are both very successful. Uh, you know, whether or not you've got a sub, it doesn't really matter. It was going to be a 50-50 split as to what happened with that map regardless. I think so. But uh, we are still waiting on one more player. Just a couple of updates across what else is happening in losers round one. Uh, Mississippi State did get a 3-0 versus Penn State. Blue, as we were calling from before. But taking a look at some of the games that are going on right now, Bowling Green State was able to find a 250-199 to 199 win versus the St. Clair Saints. They are actually in the middle of the search and destroy, currently on the Bravo stream. And then on the matchup just beyond that, You've got Oregon playing up against Butler. It was a 250-190 win on the hard point, and then a 6-5 win uh, on the search and destroy. That one about to head to map number three. Beyond that, we still have a handful of matches that are just about ready to start as we're getting a look at potentially this Rutgers and Maryland game that'll kind of finish out our loser's bracket. 
We are hoping to get the Alabama and Arkansas game started right at 530. As again, there were members from Alabama that were playing in the Call of Duty Challengers Cup today. And then beyond that, you take a look quickly at the top side of our winner's bracket. That's going to be where most of the action is going to be coming through next. Purdue and Grossmont, UT Dallas, and the Illini Orange Squad slated to start off at 530. Also, Concord Maroon and Arizona State in the mix. I believe two of those three matches are likely going to be streamed unless we get the full sail Penn State white game, um, which we're hoping to have on the mainstream at 530. But again, team members from both of those teams playing in the Challengers Cup today. So it just becomes when they're most available. Um, we'll set things to just a small brief break. I think our lobby just got populated, but we'll make sure all of our assets are good. And when we come back, we'll be jumping into map number three. It'll be Governor for the... Hello, welcome back to the Collegiate Call of Duty League. We're jumping into map number three, University of Texas at Arlington. Currently up two maps against the Northern Iowa Panthers. But again, you and I, we looked at this map set at the beginning and thought everything was looking pretty solid for them, but their best chance at coming back forward with the Fever would be here on the Gunrunner Dom. And so far, from the seed side of the map, they've found a favorable handful of kills, and they're starting to make some pretty decent progress, not just through the B flag, but also potentially over towards A, as Mellow has found himself his third strike kill. Up from Mello and oh, Ooh. make that four beautiful kill there from Mello, almost a fifth. But Magic Beeman has their number. UDA Summit going to stop the bleeding as they do not lose control of the A flag. Get still, there's another player. It's going to be Dorno this time that's filtered through, and this is what's going to be problematic for a UDA Summit. Although they uh, they do actually manage to pull off a, a C neutral, they have to be very careful that they do not get spawn trapped on A. That is a uh, very, very problematic for a number of teams that spawn over at A. I haven't actually seen it in recent times, but you and I should. We've seen it multiple times previously. We know it is a spawn trap that can be utilized, can be abused, and uh, UDA Summit can have to be very, very careful spawning at A, but they do not allow that to happen. And Matthew Hawk looks like he actually is going to be pulling the main AR. And once again here, as Mellow and Splashy get the job done over towards the middle of the map, and while they've done that, Jim Bot has been freed up to go over to A for a neutral. Then spawns. They're gonna go north to south here on your mini map. So expect to see UTA either spawning top right or top left, while you and I will be spawning likely right in those cargos bottom middle. And this is dangerous. You and I, you've got to read this correctly and they do a really solid job. What they've wanted this entire time is the A side of the map. They flood through the middle, they flood through the woods. They're able to get the A flip, and now they've got numbers approaching on the B. So yes, it is a small lead for UTA, but you and I is exactly where they want to be. And we're going to see exactly how they try to play this one out as you're already taking a look at Melo making a neutral play for C. Good stuff here from Melo is uh, once again, I love this from Northern Iowa Panthers. Yeah, they're down, but they're actually playing this domination much, much better than they played the Search and Destroy. Much, yes. much better than they played the hard point. And I think maybe the break in between map number two and map, map number three has really given them a chance to regain, hit the uh, hit the fat regain, as we love to say in the, the Call of Duty scene. Yeah, all right, shit, I'm down with the lingo. And uh, North Iowa <laughs> Panthers hit. Still down in this game, but looking a little bit better. Let's see if they can get control of B. As now this fight going down. UDA Summit losing all those fights. And actually, as I say it, Shift, North Iowa Panthers are going to win their gunfights. Dorno picks up a beautiful two-piece, and they get control of the B flag. UDA Summit right back to the C spawn. And North Iowa Panthers, they look good here. Yeah, and again, you've got Jimbot, who found himself at AR. He's playing from the cold side stairs. That's the one part of what needs to be three parts to put a spawn trap into the water tower. The other is actually to come through Mellow, who once again frees himself up to get over to C. It's a neutralization. And if he sticks here, if he can read the numbers towards B, he could have actually gone for a capture, but he decides to play this one passively. And he understands that, hey, I got to get myself in the middle of the map. He puts himself in the boiler room. A beautiful awareness play from Mellow, but now he's going to find himself a free second kill and just like that northern iowa they're turning this into pressure and numbers over to b now though not done yet he'll find another kill before eventually being dropped with the panthers they've got numbers here as long as they can just find a way to work into this coal area they should once again reflip the b flag they should man not if magic beeman though has anything to say about it picks up a beautiful two piece the progression already made is picked up though by matthew hawk and one more player for this northern iowa side they are going to get control of b once again and shift this game is proven to be incredibly close so far. Both Northern Iowa Panthers and UDA Summit have uh, finally delivered what we promised this series to be an incredibly uh, close affair. UDA Summit now inside the boiler room. They have control of the mid map. And they're looking at free game B once again. Mm. Man, this B flag just keeps on flip flopping back and forth, back and forth. Omega, though, is going to pick up a huge three piece. Kid Dragon follows up with fourth. And now, we were talking earlier on about UDA being in this A spawn trap. You're actually starting to see UDA 
Lightning set up for a set spawn trap onto the North Iowa Panthers. They have the players oh, ready no. to move. But unfortunately for Omega, they do not cover this player properly whatsoever. North Iowa Panthers is going to be able to break out of the spawn trap for now. They have a moment to break away. They need to make the revolution happen. Well, they they get a little bit of success on one area, but it gets taken away on the other. Exo was holding the cargo side pinch as you and I was trying to make a play from A to C. He gets himself too. Now he's on four third as he finds another double kill. And just as easily as you thought, okay, Northern Iowa, we got some kills. You can make your way over towards the B side of the map. Exo is dominating the middle of the map. So this is, again, a very one-dimensional approach for you and I. No one in the boiler room. Exo, he's going to find himself his fifth kill of his life, but will eventually drop in you and I, which is sheer force of numbers will get back over to reflip the b flag this is going to be a dead even first half 75 to 75 and what a half it was that has got to be one of my favorite half of domination single-handedly ever casting call of duty modern warfare i'm not the biggest fan of domination i'll admit but this is one of those times where it is playing really really nicely i think every single play from northern iowa panthers and media summit matters in the grand scheme of things nobody really slips up on any of the plays i feel uh, everything led to something and uda and northern iowa panthers are playing so so closely here now though we switch sides at the half as you say shift we end the first half with a equal score line 75 points a piece mellow and co on the northern iowa panthers are going to be spawning over at a now going to be running towards B. And they go a little bit different here. Norvai and Power Panthers want that early advantage. They want to get control of A before rushing to B. EDA uh. send all four players straight towards B. They look for more pressure. Of course, that means they have control of the boiler room, but they lose that key engagement. Dorno takes out Linga in the boiler room. Crucial control over this B flag may have just been handed away to the Northern Iowa Panthers. And as they get all the kills in their favor, it means they can capture this B point. And that is so, so crucial shift. Beautiful play from Northern Iowa Panthers. They get control of the boiler room. They win gun trucks from there on out. And UDA Summit are pushed away from this B flag. And again, if you just zoom away from the immediate and think about the general picture that's starting to form here, Northern Iowa started on the C side of the map in the first half. So you're looking at a 75-75 saying, well, that's not a necessarily a good half for Northern Iowa. The argument should be made that yes, it was because they spent about a minute and a half trying to make the flip from C to A. So now that they're spawning on the A side naturally, if they could continue to do what they just did last half, but starting from the A side, you figure that that lead will eventually grow, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Dorno takes the baton away from Melo as he's the one now neutralizing C. And actually, he's going to go for potentially a full capture. He does get taken down before he can make things too interesting. But again, look what that does on the minimap to UTA. There are not just two members, but a third and a fourth spawn up behind C. So now there are numbers for the Northern Iowa Panthers to make this pinch happen over to B. Mello hitting from the control room will find one more to again stall off the reinforcements. A good win from Dorno, and the Panthers have numbers to reflip this B flag back in their favor. Dorno has been so crucial across this game so far. I mean, he's only 17 and 13, but has made so many crucial gunfight wins happen. The Northern Iowa Panthers now have the lead in this game. UDA Summit gonna have to come back into this one, and they're doing a great job as they send Linga over towards the A flag for the neutralization. Could open up the potential here for a B push. And now it's actually just down to Splashy on this B flag. Going to get some help from Jimbot sooner rather than later. But Omega has an important one-on-one -on -one engagement to win. Wins it. And that's, that's the second of this two spree. UDA Summit need this neutralization on B at the very least. They're looking for it. As Dorno looks to play hero once again. Will get one kill, but not before falling. And UDA Summit will be able to capture B off the back of that. And shit. This continues to go back and forth. Northern Iowa Panthers, they're eight points ahead. And things will look to change in 40 more seconds as UDA Summit once again have control of B. And again, UTA, they're not looking for an A neutral initially. This is such calm, collected play from the UTA Summit. They want to get that little bit of a spawn trap, then put the numbers mid-map. And if they get one more sequence of kills, then maybe you go for the A side neutral. But it looks to me that UTA is fine being on the C side of the map, mostly because they've been able to put this execution on the spawn trap through not once, not twice, but now three times as they've essentially re-hit back over towards the mine entrance. UTA holding on nicely as you and I has to force some pressure to the middle of the map. And well, Splash is the only member still left alive. He fortunately gets out of one area, but runs into the hard place of Exo through the fence. We will see Mello get some freedom to make a play over to C. And again, just keep an eye on your minimap. How does UTA respond to this play? Do they send members back? 
Well, they're gonna have to because the gunfight for Mello was one on the C. So now he can play his life, a neutral flag, 90 seconds to play in a four point game. And you and I, once again, are waiting for the stack of this four members oh, to no. now make a play for potentially a full dumb. Mello wins a double kill. This is a 4v2 on the middle of the map. Splashy pinches, he'll find a double. You and I with the potential to full cap. And with oh, that, UTA no. spun up behind the A flag. Oh, dearie me. Mello has just clutched the hell up for the Northern Iowa Panthers, of course, with those kills on the C flag. UDA Summit then lose control of B off the back of it. And you can kind of see it, the mental headspace absolutely shows in the gameplay as they just panic. They're like, no, hang on, this is our C. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And they lose control of B off the back of it. UDA Summit have single-handedly brought themselves back into this game. But now, Northern Iowa, they're trying to capture this A flag shift. You look, Whoa. number one player, number six, is already over there. Northern Iowa Panthers successfully going to neutralize A for just a moment. UDA Summit for this last 30 seconds of time. They're trying to control this game. They're trying to keep the lead. And again, this is a massive moment as you and I continue to flood members from cargo over to A. They've got a north-south spawn flip. It's going to be just the AC hold for you and I, but that will likely be enough because UTA is spawning all oh the way back behind God. C, which they currently do not have. There's no chance for them to get to B in time. And that, again, some gunfights may not have been the most pog champ things in the world, but the way that Northern Iowa just played that map goes to show why they are so strong on domination. Gunrunner beautifully played. And again, it, it, I will say this again, a little caveat. You compare this to a pro level game. It wasn't moving as fast as the pros would make some of these calls, but all of the corrections where it came to you and I saying, this isn't what we want. How do we get back into this game? They were making all the correct decisions and we love to see that decision making coming out of a Northern Iowa squad that again is playing without one of their best players. I can't believe how well played that domination was from both sides. Yeah. But really, for me, I've got to say it, what flipped it, what really decided it in the end was that one play from Mello. I'm sure as hell. And I will call this now, right? I don't, I don't know if we can do if we can do like clips uh, from like previous maps and stuff. What I will say is uh, if it comes down to it, if it is possible to have clips uh, from previous maps uh, like in the series, I would say that the clip you would pick is absolutely Mello's play coming down to it from the wire. No, I were Panthers, man. I just can't stress how beautiful that play was. Mello neutralizes the C flag picks up one kill and just hides, just hides, has an idea and waits for the perfect moment to pounce on the next two kills that come his way, able to capture the sleeve flag on the back of it. And it has such a profound effect on B, right? Because UTA, they were holding down fort in B. It's kind of like a war on two fronts, right? B, the B flag fight was going down for what was a solid like 30, 40 seconds. And UTA lose the fight off the back of getting shaky leg. They get so scared because they're like, yeah. we just lost our home flag. What, what do we do? I mean, do they push through? Do they go back to C? And that stress, just that, that moment of stress, it really, really puts them off guard and it enables an Orphan Isle Panthers to just jump on a flag, win a selection of kills. And from that moment onwards, I think that all of the progress that UTA have made to get back into the game have just been thrown out the window. Northern Iowa Panthers, man, they really, really impressed me in that game. And they looked so different to what yes. they were doing in Hardpoint in Search and Destroy. At Hardpoint in Search and Destroy, they looked like a bunch of headless chickens just running around the map. This time around, they looked calm, they looked collected, and they looked very composed in everything that they were doing. All of their actions were meant, they meant to do what they were doing. And I really, really love that game. Not just from the Northern Iowa Panthers, I will say, from UTA 2. It was a beautifully played game of Call of Duty, and that's why I love casting this game. Same. And I know there's been a lot of differences of what's going on in Domination as far as opinions. But for me personally, I think when, you, when you're out there as an audience member, I, I really do try to encourage you all just to kind of zoom out and just take a look down to the minimap to see how the mm -hmm. movements are starting to kind of be put together because it is one double kill that can make a massive difference of what the map looks like and in turn, what the score looks like. So again, you mentioned it, everyone making the decisions that they thought were the best. And honestly speaking, it just came down to a couple of moments here or there. And well, you were talking about how you wanted to see a clip of that play that came through Brody. Uh, we, we can make that play happen for you. We can break that down for you. That's just yes. the way things work oh, here. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> we're ready to pull this one through and we'll take a look at this as soon as we get the swip over of the scene as far as how this play occurred <laughs> with the last about 90 seconds or so for that play from Northern Iowa that you were mentioning. You take a look at how this all turned out. 
and simply put, we'll do Northern Iowa in the blue. Here's that player of mellow that's sitting on the bottom side of your mini map. Look at the scuffle that's happening currently at B. Everyone is focused that way, including every single member of UTA. So what does this lead to an opportunity? Mello is just looking for information. If he faces resistance, he holds his spot and maybe rotates to help at B. But hey, nobody's here. I'm going to go make the neutral play for C. And as these respawns for UTA come up, they're all going to go this way and realize quickly that, hey, no one's helping out at C. So they need to start making a play with numbers to go neutralize. And with that, it leads to a 4v2 in the B flag. And Mello will sit right on the backside and find this double kill as we'll try to play this one hopefully smoothly for you guys. Here you'll see it. Again, just keep an eye on number one on your minimap, making this rotation over to C. This is when that play starts to funnel. And again, Mello not only wins one kill here initially, he's going to get an opportunity for more off of the respawn. This is that moment that you were talking about where UTA, you're spawning all the way back behind the water tower. You have to commit to dealing with this guy on C, but count the numbers. You're going to have one, two. This was a third and a fourth, but they're going to spawn up, and it's going to be a 4v2 on the B flag. And as soon as Mello wins this second exchange of gunfights that you're about to see come up, that's when you and I could find the numbers to make the play for B. And from there on out, this is when the map really turned around because you're going to see the spawns go absolutely wild. There were the kills that came in, and from there on out, numbers at B, numbers at C, and with that, you go into a convincing lead and so much map pressure. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned, it, that was the breaking point for UTA. They couldn't react past that moment. I think it was the breaking point. I think, you know, there was there was such a traffic jam at that B flag for the longest time. I think, like, if we were to have a stat for the amount of times that that B flag flipped in that map, it would, be, it would probably be double figures, right? I mean, that B flag flipped so, so many times, and there was a lot of pressure building up there. Um, it was good on Melo to break it in the way that they did, and to get that two-piece was... Uh, it's just insane. It was it was such a perfect play, and it's the promise that I've wanted. I you know there are people in the <laughs> chat that are hyping up the Northern Iowa Panthers. I need to see this promise, and I finally see it executed there in that game. It was very well played. I've got to give it to them. Um, so great stuff from the Northern Iowa Panthers. But now they've got to continue in this series. They go back to hard point, you know, um, in uh, Gunrunner, which is going to be pretty interesting. Again, this is one of those maps that these guys haven't really played much. UTA have only played it. Three, twi three times um, in yeah. the entirety of the regular season. And of course, uh, I believe it, it actually does actually count the playoffs. Uh, and they've won one of those situations, lost the other two. You uh, look at you and I instead, and they actually uh, played it seven times. They've uh, lost it four times, have won it three. So this hasn't been the best map mode combination for either of these two teams thus far. Uh, but I would say it does still favor you and I here, actually. I mean, they've won it three times. And it's been a while since we've seen you and I on this map. I think generally speaking, it's been a, a time since they've played Gunner. They played it a lot at the beginning of the season and things have kind of moved away from that as they progress. So now that you're going back to it, you just found a lot of success working, especially the middle of the map. If you're you and I, it would be great if you could continue to do that here on Hardpoint because not only does that mean you're finding a favor in the middle of the map, but that turns into favorable rotations as you go from Hardpoint to Hardpoint. So if there were to be a setup to potentially send this to a map five, I think you're okay with it being on Gunrunner for you and I. Again, we weren't 100% sure what this team was going to look like having not had, rather not having Stunner in the lineup. It didn't look good through the Hackney Yard Hardpoint. It didn't look good through the Search and Destroy. We were hoping for better, but our expectations were a little bit misguided because, again, we have not <laughs> seen this team play with Matthew. And yep. now here, coming off of their strongest map mode combination in Gunrunner Dom, can they find a way to bounce back and get back into this series in this map four? I, I think they absolutely can if they continue to play at the level that they just showcased that they could as we saw them in the Gunrunner Dom. Yeah, absolutely. I think they finally found their feet in this one. I think it took them a little bit of time. You know, at the end of the day, you do kind of have to give the Northern Iowa Panthers a little bit of credit at the end of the day. Yeah. They are playing sub, and uh, I think it has been made quite clear that Stunner was a very important player to this roster. Not only that, there has been roles change around, and seeing them play that well in Gunrunner Domination, it gives me some promise for the rest of the series. Uh, this could possibly be a reverse sweep. You know, let's not count Northern Iowa Panthers out of this one just yet. We were, uh, I think, talking up UDA Summit quite a lot um, after that map two victory of just how good of a roster they can be, and that maybe they can be the ones to pull off a Cinderella story in the remainder of this bracket. I'm not so sure anymore. Maybe the Northern Iowa Panthers can win this one. Their uh, college card bracket in the playoffs here in 2020. It's not over just yet, Shift. No, not it's not over by any stretch of the imagination.
And um, we do have a couple more matches that we're looking forward to getting into in the winner's round two, uh, which I think is going to provide a lot of heat in the kitchen here as we kind of wrap through our Saturday. But here in loser's round one, things are getting a little bit tight as you and I are showing some big signs of life. Again, playing very well with the decision making in their Gunrunner Dom. Can they do that once again on the Gunrunner, but change the mode? To hard point it would be a ramaza for map number five too we haven't really spoken much about that northern iowa has only played the map once but similarly so ut arlington has only played the map once that we've seen throughout their regular season yeah. so anything can happen from here on out obviously it comes down to what do you do in the immediate map for if you're northern iowa you would love to see a good start from mellow dorio and splashy like they did previously in the dom that's what you would love to see, of course. Uh, just a refresh for you guys. Map number one was, uh, it, it's not the nicest yeah, if you're a Northern Ireland fan. 95 points is all Northern Ireland were able to amount at the end of map number one as uh, we now go into map number four. Maybe a little bit better hard point performance from the Northern Iowa Panthers. Can they strike here and force a game number five in the series? Well, we're about to find out, folks. We're in the series, we're in the game, and Northern Iowa Panthers actually starting strong here. They are dominating the kill feed. It is all purple as the Northern Iowa Panthers win all their fights. They haven't got the majority of the time for the hill, but what they do have shift, they have those all-important spawns, P2. Mm, but careful, Kid Dragon's worked his way through the water tower. I think that you and I is aware of this as three members are going in on the hunting party. Omega's also making a little bit of a distraction play through the cargo containers. They deal with one of the threats. They deal with the second. Beautiful readjustment for Northern Iowa. Good comps clearly have to be coming through for them in this. They will give up likely the better part of these last 10 seconds. But again, your whole goal is focused on getting yourself established and set up for this P2. And they're doing a great job of making sure nobody slips behind the cracks. Northern Iowa Panthers right now, they have control of P2. They're a solid like 20 seconds down behind the UTA Summit, but that can be earned back with a good hold on P2, which everybody knows is a money hill in this map in gun runner hard point but uds i'm actually going to win those first three kills chick dragon omega and linger all win their respect one engagement but jim bot picks up a huge wow. two piece on the opening of the hard point kid dragon is going to trade out and unfortunately it doesn't really amount to anything as uda summit are going to break in for the last 35 seconds of time northern iowa panthers realistically speaking only have a couple more pushes left in them i think you do not want to put too much effort in this. You need to go for the rotation. And even if Northern Iowa Panthers break into this, which they do, they still have to be concerned with that rotation shift. And again, I like to think of these hard points split into three segments of 20. You've got your initial 20, your contest 20, and then your scrap 20. Northern Iowa try to re-hit one more time at 30 seconds, right in that contest 20. Plus, they held the rotational spawns going from P2 to P3. Those exist on the very north side of your minimap. So what does that mean? Yeah, you lose out on the ability to get to P3 first, but because UTA Summit were spawning down by cargo, they couldn't fully get back in to reinforce the scrap 20. So they have to take the long rotation around. Fortunately, they get there and they take a couple of kills through the middle of the map. But Northern Iowa make the best of what they had available to them. Now it's a test of how do you break through to P3. They're going to try to make this play happen up close and personal. And with that, Kid Dragon will find one. A lot of damage off of Semtex for a second. But watch out for Mello. He's sitting on number one of your mini map, Right on the back side of boxes, he could pinch this hill up. And it looks like he's done just that. Again, right at the tail end of the contest 20, Northern Iowa will find a chance to put some pressure on UTA. Unfortunately, though, they will not get the majority of this scrap time. Northern Iowa Panthers are going to lose a lot of time off the back of this cold hole. Cold hole, hill hole. I can speak for a second. That is, don't be fair, that is a ton of I'm not going to lie. I'm going to fend myself out. That is uh, quite a hard thing to say. But UTA Summit are going to get a little majority of time. We'll call P3. I'll make it a little bit easier for myself. Now we're going into the cargo containers. And Northern Iowa Panthers need a good hold here. And the problem I think a lot of teams have on this P4 and this cargo containers is that you need to set yourself up for P5 really, really early. P5 is mm. yet another one of the many money hills here on Gunrunner Hardpoint. You need to set yourself up for that. And I think for that reason alone, Northern Iowa could essentially give you the majority of time on this hill without real problems for a UDA summit, but they won't. Lingo is still trying for this one. Lingo, sorry, I don't know Lingo, but Lingo looking for all these kills in the hill and we'll get them a splash through the wall. Face Semtex is going to close it out. Exo picks up two. That is a huge two piece to get as UTA Summit are going to ah. get control of the hill for the last 20 seconds of time. But what we haven't noticed here is that the spawns have flipped. Northern Iowa Panthers do not care about that scrap time because they've got the spawns for P5. 
It was a sleight of hand trick. Look over here while I'm making my play over here. That's 100% what Northern Iowa have done. They essentially sent Mellow through Cole right around the 30 second mark because of his spawn while still four members of you and I were on the cargo hill. So this has been beautiful. Yeah, Chip, you're overhyping it. It's 70 to 114, <laughs> but if they can take care of Linga, Northern Iowa's gonna tie into this game immediately back up. Unfortunately though, three members will spawn a little bit all over the place for you and I. And with the numbers, UTA will make full value of their initial break and get a full establishment here on P5. UDA Summit, they have a 50 point advantage over the Northern Iowa Panthers. Can they extend it? They've got 30 seconds available to purchase. Can they make the buy? We shall see. Linger up top is going to get taken down. Exo though, we want two piece. It's going to come down to a 1v1. Exo picks up three inside P5 and they will get the remainder of this time. Surely 15 seconds left. Northern Iowa Panthers are not going to put any stock into that remaining scrap time and shift. At the end of the first set of rotations here, UTA Summit, they're looking pretty good. They're a solid 75, oh. 80 points over the Northern Iowa Panthers. Omega puts up a huge three piece. So this could open the door to an early break for those P2 spawns. Again, it's just Omega. Solo oh, road no. mission what? into play. There's number five. Number six right around the corner. Omega still alive. Not having fully influenced the spawns yet. There's still more work to do. It's nine to five. It's business hours. And well, Quarantine in effect, says Northern Iowa. You're not an essential business. Go back home. We'll take these P2 spawns, but it comes at a steep cost as UTA is currently up about 100 points. UDA right now looking pretty good in this hard point. They have 25 seconds left of time to earn, and there is still one player being a problem who would continue to be bigger problems for Northern Iowa Panthers. You don't see it on your minimap right now. Linger is winning gunfights over towards the backside of the minimap, is finally dealt with, and UTA Summit are going to be removed from the situation for those PG spawns. But again, I love the cushion that the UTA Summit side have actually built themselves up over the course of this map so far. I mean, Northern Iowa Panthers can get the entire 60 seconds here, and they will still be a solid 50, 60 points behind UTA Summit. This is a huge, huge situation for UTA Summit to find themselves in. They have built themselves a huge safety net up, and they have a lot of room to work with as they try to break these two. This is a this game. The game is going to be decided right here. You and I have to hold this. And well, they're already going to bend. Will they fully break? Oh, Matthew man. comes up with two big kills on the back. Now he can help out on the hill. Matt will find himself a third as Dono will find two more in the front. It was a bend, but not a break from Northern Iowa. Still alive in this game. But you have to finish off these final 30. You cannot give it away. And at the same point, you also can't lose the rotation. So it's going to be down to number four, Splashy. He's got to win one more battle in a 1v2. He'll lose it. Jimbot will come through. But Matthew's now by himself. And even though you get the scrap 13, you're put in a position, if you're Northern Iowa, like you were in the first rotation, to where you have to break P3. UTA Summit, a full 100 points behind here. Shift, North and Iowa Panthers, they need a perfect break here right now. Last time around on P3, they were so slow with it, and they might just be once again. Once. Omega picked up two, but they have flipped the spawn somehow. I'm unsure how they managed to do it, but they flipped the spawns here. Modern Warfare has just gifted the North and Iowa Panthers a lifeline. Will they use it? Uh, fortunately for them, the kills are just going UDA Summit's way. Exo picks up two. Linga picks up another one. Dono and Matthew, though, are going to be responding. Linga has a big two piece to make inside the hard point. Can't do so. And guess what, Shift? The Northern Iowa Panthers, they're broken in. This is an opportunity again. You're going to have to play perfect hard point, though, from here on out. You've got to hold these last 20. You cannot give up a single second of this. The moment that you let UTA get to above 230, this is the moment that they can start making the decision of let's be annoying and just play for scrap or let's be annoying and go for a super early rotation. So look, 12 seconds conceded for UTA, but they control the middle of the map. This is a split hit for Northern Iowa. Splashy has to find a couple of kills. Oh, almost gets the double and it would have given an opportunity for Northern Iowa to get an early contest. Watch out for Dono on the back. Exo will deal with them, and now UTA, they're going to be allowed to zone off this P4 hill. Omega moving forward is going to catch a couple players off guard. He'll turn that into a two-piece, and this is about it here for you and I. The UTA Summit looking solid throughout the Gone Runner. Northern Iowa trying to make the plays, but at the end of the day, when you've got Omega going 31 and 18, it's going to be difficult to battle up against that, and you got one more hit here for Northern Iowa before the game is going to be called, and they won't quite get there. University of Texas at Arlington will take this series in four maps at the total of a 250 to 142 here on Gunrunner. Wow.
jeez, uh, I think that, you know, UTA kind of built themselves up solidly there over you and I, and it was kind of apparent from the outset, really, that this wasn't going to be a good game for the Northern Iowa Panthers. Yeah, they had a great domination, and you really, really do have to give it to them that they prove they proved for themselves as a pretty good domination team. I think yeah. that much has been clear. It's just kind of unfortunate, again, the situation they were put in, that they didn't have Stunner on the roster. They had to use a, a pickup that wasn't playing the same role, that is not a like-for-like -like player. And uh, it really did show in the majority of maps that in the series, the hard points uh, both were not that great, unfortunately, for... Uh, they improved, right? We'll, we'll get that out of the way. Um, if you compare map number one to map number four, they improved by quite a lot. But it, it was even in the session story. It just it, it showed that they weren't really looking as confident with this pickup. Uh, but as I said, you know, they've got to be proud of themselves still. That domination was a very, very good showing. Um, I think that is one of genuinely my favorite maps I've ever watched this year. It was fun. Warfare. <laughs> it was so, so fun. And I think uh, you and I can at least walk away from the series with their heads held high. Yes, all right, you, you drop out in top 32. Yes, you drop out in losers round one. But there is an asterisk over that performance that you didn't have your, uh, your one of your best players on the lineup. And, and that's just the way it is sometimes. But for UDA, they're moving on in the bracket. They're not done yet. And, you know, just to kind of put one more little, you know, button on that, on, uh, on that kind of point, simply put, again, for Northern Iowa throughout the regular season, they looked good all the way through. Close series versus Purdue that ended up in a loss. Close series versus Illinois that ended up in a loss. A close series versus Butler, which they win. A close vers series versus Liberty Red that they unfortunately lose. Again, that was an incredible regular season run for Northern Iowa. You have to feel at least pretty solid about what you were able to do uh, throughout the back half of the season. And, you know, if these guys could come back and, and participate again in the next year, I have a lot of stock going in favor of Northern Iowa to be a special team in the Midwest. They, they really showcased a lot of things and uh, you know, it's tough. GG's only at the end of the day, you know, situations are what situations are, you know, unfortunately we have, you know, rules and regulations on participation and, being able to make sure you continue your eligibility throughout the regular season. And unfortunately, Northern Iowa was put into a little bit of a bind. But uh, as we take a look at what else is happening around the league, let's go to the loser's bracket if we can here, Benji, as that's what we're dealing with most of our matches currently. It will uh, update here in a moment that UT Arlington has found a 3-1 versus Northern Iowa. Bowling Green and the Saints Academy squad of St. Clair uh, should be going on on map number three. Uh, the Bravo stream was showcasing that. Um, I have not necessarily seen a report as far as what exactly has occurred in that map number three. But beyond that point, we still have a couple more matches that we're waiting on. Rutgers Scarlet currently up 2-0 versus Maryland and what looks to be a very tight one. 252 through 31 was the first hard point. 6-4 was the search. We'll be heading to domination for that one up next. Uh, and then beyond that, we're still waiting for the start of Arkansas and Alabama. Essentially just waiting for Hancho to get through with his Challengers Cup series. But again, as we transition to the winner's bracket, that's where we're going to be going to next with most of our broadcast coverage as we'll be dealing with uh, definitely a stream match in some fashion of UT Dallas and the Illini Orange game. That one highlighted right there. If we have to or need to or have the ability to, I guess I should rather say, Purdue versus Grossbun is also happening at 530, which we very well could be bringing broadcast coverage with. But as you take a look at the lower half of the winner's bracket, the matchup that we're all kind of waiting on right now for the next Alpha stream match would be full sale versus Penn State White. That one's slated to start at 5.30, pending, of course, that the Challengers players have uh, completed their run for the day in that Challengers Cup series. But, uh, Brody, this has been your first real extensive look at the CCL mm -hmm. in some time. Uh, I kind of want to get your final thoughts before we swap up the casting talent. I've loved it. I've I loved every single second of it. It's just been incredible once again. I mean, uh, today especially has just proven to me. I mean, I mean, I love casting the regular season when I just get the chance to do so. Again, it's kind of hard because you're in we're in the UK over here. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, you, you don't wanna you don't wanna annoy your housemates, but uh, it's it's kind of nice. Again, this this day has kind of reminded me exactly what I love about the CCL, which is just the passion, not just from the players but from the community. You know, seeing everyone coming in and supported, we're hitting some great viewership um, on the stream. Um, I just think that something like this is just awesome you know like this is a really this is just what happens when a community holds together an event and really supports it and it has just been a great uh to cast over some of these matches today they've been incredibly close uh that last match was just one of my favorites again as i said that domination was perfect uh brilliantly played from both sides and i absolutely loved it so uh i'm gonna have fun when i return again uh, to cast <laughs> we may may 15th when we get on to the uh, final oh, couple of days um of ccl playoffs don't worry guys if you uh if you uh get a bit of a fed up with the americans on stream i'm still here i'm still here uh, so, uh don't worry about that but unfortunately uh, we are going to have a couple of americans coming in there uh, coming in what a cheeky guy there's no chance you can say. <laughs>
<laughs> but it's such as life. Coming up next, though, again, we're jumping into the winner's bracket. And with that, you'll see Austin Visions, Neil, and Andy Proper Neckrich joining you guys for the Alpha stream. And again, continually throughout the evening, other matchups will be streaming on our Bravo channel. If you want to get a direct link to that, exclamation point Bravo in the chat will get you that. Otherwise, if you want to watch both at the same time, exclamation point multi will get you a link to the multi stream. We'll catch you guys in the chat. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the games. But for now, signing off, hopefully we'll catch you guys for more Call of Duty in just a moment.